Good, good evening. Too loud. Um, so the plan for, for today is, well, first, we can finish our discussion about prototypes and particularly we need to speak about low fidelity prototypes that will be also the next action item for you and this will be around half an hour and then we can move let's say to an exercise around low fidelity prototypes using as an example two prototypes from this course last year uh, pre-feedback prototypes um, so they could have something to to fix and they add eventually but this is the pre-feedback um, prototypes of two different groups but before going there let's have a look at the uh, low fidelity prototypes and particularly paper prototypes that's how we in intend low fidelity we said yesterday that low fidelity means low fidelity in realism or in usage and one way to create one popular way to create low fidelity prototypes is using pen and papers or the digital equivalent with a pen and a ta tablet so and free uh, so what is a paper prototype? A paper prototype is an end-drawn mock-up of the user interface, usually a multiple sheet of paper of various sizes. And various sizes, because it depends on the device you are prototyping for, and also depends what you are doing with your prototype. So here there is, uh, let's say in the first part, so these two are two, are paper prototype of a mobile application and so which are the things you can if you want notice about this let's let's ignore these other three that are color red etc but these two what you notice if there is something to notice Yes. Uh, the size of the paper is uh, large, like the screen, but it's higher than the screen, so that you can scroll it. Hmm? So if the person scroll on the screen, the paper actually moves and gives the idea of scrolling through the screen. So that's one thing you can notice. Uh, the other thing is clearly that they used um, a container to resemble a smartphone. So this container is the, the black one here, and you can clearly insert and move these different pieces of papers. And there are two of them, then there are also these color red, but these are two of them, and you can change it, and you need to change it according to what you are going to show on the screen in that moment. And there is another thing that is maybe not a lot visible, a little bit here. You see that black line, right? What could be a real black line or it's shadow? It could be a drop-down list. Uh, well, it's not big enough to, to, to see, but sure, it seems from this distance uh, another piece of paper on top of the background so that you can have parts, so you can have full screens, but also portion of it that you can change according to what happens. So multiple papers with different form you can mimic like a scroll interaction in this case the uh, vertical scroll but you can also imagine 
to rotate the phone and implement uh, simulate mm, the horizontal scrolling or that kind of movement and this is a paper prototype so you as designer as creator draw these things and you see they are black and white and drawn so nothing really particular and fancy and long to do uh, if you make a mistake so you just can delete it or throw it away and start again it's quick and reusable so which are the key feature for a paper prototype uh, so it should be interactive where the interaction is that you have various pieces of paper you will have some that are big as the screen and others smaller and this paper show the windows the menus the dialog block boxes what's happening on the application and they are sketches so and drawn with no particular precision etc so that's one key feature it should be interactive and this interaction is in a way natural and not identical to the one to not realistic in some case uh, if you are prototyping a web application for a desktop computer you won't have a mouse and a pointer you will just have your finger and pointing or clicking on something, touching something, will become clicking on that thing. And writing will be typing. Again, if you imagine a web application for desktop, if you need someone to write some text, you can actually have this person write, but write not with a keyboard, free writing. So it's, it's interactional, you have a piece of paper, you know how to everybody let's say know how to manage piece of papers and to move them and what happens if you fold them etc uh, so it's low fidelity in look and feel because clearly it's not realistic it's black and white is made with pencil or pens and is not doing anything on its own you need someone to move the piece of papers if you want to change screen so if I press next I would need a person to remove the piece of paper that I have in front of me and put another one in front of me that is the results of the next action so it's low fidelity in lock and look and feel and but it's high fidelity in depth so all the operations can be done in some way so how you operate a paper prototype you have once you draw it you have a person that simulate the computer's operation so i have let's say user interface i press login and then a person take the screen in front of me and replace it with another piece of paper with the next step after the login i click on close so i tap on close and a person show me the small piece that say are you sure you want to close the application yes no and if i tap on yes this person remove all the papers in front of me and give me another piece of paper with the results of the operation so this person is responsible to simulate the operation of the computer and simulate them correctly according to what i am doing with the user interface so low technology low fidelity require to be interactive a person different from the one that is using it for simulating how it's working so which are the materials for doing a paper prototype these are like kindergarten skill so you just need papers pens market post-it scotch glues she source like you know you can have a six year old helping you and it's uh, it's more than doable um, you can also use uh, photocopies or stencil uh, if you need to have uh, the uh, nav bar let's say of uh, an application on multiple pages you can make uh, a photocopy of that so that you don't have to draw it every time if you need 10 times you can just copy that and print them 10 times 
if you are doing it on, on paper. Mm -hmm. So you can also have a printouts of a screenshot, again, black and white, handmade as much as possible so that you can move it, copy it, reuse it as many times as possible. Mm -hmm. So materials that you also will need to, to create a paper prototype are these. And again, we are speaking, I am speaking about paper prototypes because the idea generate from actual piece of paper with actual pens and she source. But if you have a tablet, you can also use it for creating a paper prototype, just using the, the pencil of the tablet. Uh, otherwise it's not possible, all the finger to draw it, but it should be hand drawn. It cannot be done with a software because a software will create too much precise results. It must be imprecise by definition. And then since we are going to ask you to test it with another pe person, if you do it on paper, you already have it on paper. If you do it on a tablet, you need to print everything and cut everything because it's, the result should be still a paper prototype. So paper prototypes are really, really simple to do, really, really quickly, quicky, quick to do, and it's a big advantage. Um, and it's also simple, it seems like joking, but it actually has fundamental step to de decide what your user interface will do and how it will behave. So you can immediately test in after a few hours, a full complete application in some basic screen and in a quarter or less time than doing, for instance, a prototype using any software uh, application, or even less if, we, if you think about coding the entire user interface with all the interaction of all the buttons, all the links, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is part of the why paper prototyping. It's fast to build. It's way faster to sketching and drawing on paper and also easier to change than every other method. You can make a change between user testing if you, for whatever reason, even during testing it, let me cancel that, it's made with a pencil, let me cancel the pencil and fix it. Or there is a typo in a letter, let me add this letter that is missing. And well, there is no code investment Everything can be thrown away, except the, the design, the results, the, the ideas. Uh, it's also good, one, one of the good things about paper prototypes, if you remember yesterday, is that paper prototypes allow you to think about the general picture, the general interaction, and not wasting time on some details, like it's five pixel or 10 pixel. Is it perfectly aligned or not? It's red, yellow, blue, which color I need to use? Which palette I need to use? All this detail will come later and will be important eventually, but right now they are easy to skip and focus on the big picture. And also when you show this, uh, you will typically get more creative suggestions than their equivalent version well done with colors. Mm? Because if you show this, that is without colors, people will have to look at the bigger picture. will have to look at how things work more in general. Cannot tell you, oh, but this is not aligned, or I don't like the color, or this is not the color of the company, or whatever. Or here is missing a logo of the sponsoring body. You don't have all of that and you don't care in this space of all of that. You will probably need to focus on the colors, etc., but farther away. So in this moment, you can have a really creative and useful suggestion to proceed so that when you insert the color, everything else will be sort of set up uh, very well. And it's also helpful Well, you are uh, mostly or maybe all here, um, computer engineers, but clearly given that this requires skills that probably a five years old, four years old have, everybody can help to create a paper prototype. Hmm? Because it's, it's a matter of drawing, maybe if they need to, to write, they will need to be like six or seven years old, but that's the minimum age 
you need and the maximum is whatever mm? 110 if you if you know someone uh, that old mm? and no programming skill no really technological skill just knowing what to do and uh, it's easy to involve other people if needed not in this context but in general with paper prototyping um, so here there are either three examples of uh, paper prototypes um, so the first one uh, is you see a tablet application it looks like a tablet application and there are two big screens and then there are these smaller piece of papers that replace overlaps with some part of the screen when you just don't need to replace the entire content but just maybe a quarter of the screen uh, half of the screen etc uh, here there is an example instead of a paper prototype made with stencils so this uh, thing here you just have stencils so you draw uh, the boxes and you have all the objects uh, done uh, and this is another example of a paper prototype uh, from this course actually not last year before uh, in which they prototype a mobile application you can imagine and you see there is this um, part here uh, they have filters here to look for things to prepare in a kitchen and they when you tap on filters this uh, portion appear that is someone will put this portion on top of this piece of paper and you can select i don't know time between 15 and 20 minutes and according to what you select they will either change the entire piece of paper or not and similarly here there are uh, two buttons mm, uh, that they will add mm, uh, here when needed when there is an operation that happens so you don't need to redo the entire screen if you just need a portion of it but uh, you can just have the portion that is changing to replace the, um, the portion that is present on the screen. Mm. And, and you see, they are not precise. They have the key elements for a mobile application to be evaluated, understood, the text, etc. They don't have images, for instance. Mm. So here, this is a recipe. A cream... I don't know what is this but here there is a roast beef and you don't have a picture of a roast beef because you cannot actually draw uh, that, that that plate very well so it's it's an, a placeholder here there will be a picture and it's almost clear that there will be something but it's not the goal of neck picking nitpicking about oh this is picture is good this color red is black and white is appropriate is not appropriate but it just uh, a square where there will be a picture at a certain point and it will be the right one hmm? so simple to do quick to do etc here there are other two examples of paper prototypes again tablet or desktop computer this is probably desktop because you have also the um, windows also uh, or some linux flavor because you can close the window uh, enlarge it and reduce an icon hmm? so this is made like a web browser or a desktop application for trip management and there are things you can cross it and you can select them and if you select something something becomes highlighted etc uh, so even just to make up a, a more concrete and realistic example even the the windows terminal tab was prototyped on paper so this is one or the first mock-up of the Windows terminal tab bar that is now implemented on Windows and was done on paper because it's quick to do and it's easy to change and in this case was annotated with other information that could be useful for developers for proceeding and also easy to show I can pick this piece of paper and bring to 10 different people and asking for opinions and get feedback and then if something is not clear I can just draw it away draw it again or delete it and modify that portion that is not uh, is not okay uh, so these are paper prototypes and now i'm going to show you a video 
a, a piece of a video that show how to use a paper prototype to um, create a flow. Mm -hmm. So I told you that when you click on something, you can replace a piece of paper, you can add a piece of paper on it. And here there is a video that show mm -hmm. how you can use it. So just not um, imagining from what I'm saying, but you can have a clear reference. And this is about an email client. Mm -hmm. So this person is going to, to write an email and something like that. So you see the person tap on something and the computer, the other one that is acting as a computer, will so this is for an attachment and when the thing is attached then it will appear attached. Clearly is is fake, is controlled, they will always attach the same thing and will always show the same things. And you notice that this is particularly well done. And here in this portion, um, there was this, uh, this is an email. So there are the to field, the CC field, etc. And the more things you do, the more this area enlarges. So it was folded in a way you can enlarge it and reclose it when needed. Hmm? So this is highly dynamic in that sense. And here is selecting something else and it's sending the email. And when the email is sent, just the piece of paper is removed and the my client remains. And so if you, if you open it, you, I don't know what you open, but there is a new screen and then you can scroll down. And in this case, they created this longer piece of paper that you can, can see. And according to what the person is doing, the other person react in some way, changing piece of paper, replacing a portion of it, enlarging something, etc. Mm. So this is how you can use a paper prototype. So you have to be prepared to have all these pieces around and then one person will act as the computer and the other person will use it. This was a free exploration clearly was just to show how to use it uh, in our case we will be more systematic you will have you have your task so the paper prototype will just realize those three tasks and you will have something to tell people to do or to explore and so not everything will be possible but they will use the paper prototype you are creating exactly as this one in the video. And then you can make it as complex as this with pieces that are folded and you enlarge it or just replace a new piece of paper with another piece of paper or a portion of it with another portion of it. Hmm? So similarly to what this uh, video is doing. And as you hinted, you can also have dynamic screens Mm? So this is, uh, so this per with mobiles, it's pretty typical to, it's not mandatory, but it's typical to draw uh, uh, the mobile phone and then having this piece of paper that you can move top, from top to bottom or to right to left. And so change the screen means moving mm, these lines of this paper on the left, on the right. So if I press book session i will probably move to this other screen so the person the computer will move the screen here in the frame mm? and same here if i with those like to unlock i will move to the first screen and then if i press something i will move to the second screen that will say correct and here there is the version with a mobile phone and here there is the version with a smartwatch for instance same mechanism sliding moving on the top uh, on the left, on the right, on the bottom. This is very common with mobile phones, smartwatch, tablets. That kind of device is not typically done with a computer. So a screen where you just have the full A4 paper with the drawing just on a table. 
So how you test a paper prototype, similarly to what you have seen in the video. So you need for at least, let's say, two or three people. One is the computer, is the one that simulates the prototype, simulates the interaction, reply to whatever action is done. Say, press next and the computer will move the next screen in front of me. And this is the computer actor, is a person that just da do that. Is silent, is just move piece of paper around. And that's it. Is not speaking, is not doing anything that a computer will not do. So I press next and I will receive a piece of paper appropriate to the next. I press cancel and I will receive a piece of paper appropriate to the cancel. I press something that is inactive and I will not receive anything because that button is inactive. And the computer is not telling me, oh, this is inactive, try again. It's just working exactly as a computer. Then there is the facilitator. That is the one that initially presents the interface, the prototype, to the person with any task that are needed. So in your case, the three tasks you will have in your project. And most of the time we'll stay quiet and we'll just uh, interfere when there is a new task to give or there is some problem or maybe there is some clarification needed to proceed. But otherwise is there silent helping to facilitate the testing but not forcing the testing in one direction or another and then typically you have an also third person that is the observer that is there is observing the situation like during an observation it's just silent looking what the tester is doing keeping notes so if the task is create complete successfully an exercise and you have to press start to start the exercise and the person is not pressing start but is pressing something else then maybe there is some problem in that moment in that interface for which the start button is not understandable for whatever reason so that could be one thing that an observer takes note the start button for three people out of five that tested the prototype was not fundable, hmm? was not available, is not, it made it wrong. So you need to change something in the interface to make it better, clearer, etc. Hmm? So these are the three main uh, roles uh, for a general testing of a paper prototype. In our case, that will be slightly different because it will be an heuristic evaluation, but still you will need a computer and you will need a facilitator. Mm. And the server is fine, but it's not really, let's say, mandatory to have. But you will see more information on, on the assignment tree about this. But in general, these are the three uh, actors that you need from, uh, for a paper prototype. So what you can learn from a paper prototype? Well, you can surely learn the conceptual model of the entire application. Can people understand them? Are they able to use it? They understand the term, the terminology. They understand the functionality. They were looking for something that is not there. There is everything that is needed to fulfill the task or something is missing, something were, was expected that was missing. Uh, the navigation, can you move from one screen to another, come back without problem, etc. Um, and is there everything on the screen that should be, or there are items missing, items that are confusing, unclear, etc. So these are the things you can learn. You cannot learn, but you will able to learn some of these things in the other more advanced infidelity prototypes, you cannot learn the look, the color, the fonts, the spacing, etc., because you don't have them. It's all handmade. Uh, you cannot understand the efficiency nor the response time. 
because clearly the real response time after pressing a button is made up in this case because it's the response time of the person picking a piece of paper and putting it in front of you so that is the response time a response time of an implemented application will be immensely faster than that hmm? so you cannot learn if it's fast enough or slow enough also you cannot know if small changes are noticed so if a button becomes active or not active anymore you cannot know if those are noticed because even the smallest change means that a person will take a piece of paper and put it in front of you so we'll make the small change really really visible because it's actually a person moving stuff in front of you um, and you don't uh, learn a lot about uh, exploration of uh, a paper prototype uh, because people are typically deliberate so it's, you give a task and they do the task because they perceive that as not fully realistic clearly as an application so they are not exploring it too much but some of these things for instance the exploration or the small changes are or the look will be learnable from a medium fidelity prototype onwards so again we now focus on learning as much as we can on the general flow on the conceptual models on the terminology etc and then once that is hopefully set and fixed we can move on uh, with other information that are important and relevant but at least we are reasonably sure that the main things the functionality the conceptual model etc are at a good state have a good state and so uh, we can build on them without um, changing them too much okay any question about this if not let's have me stop talking for a while so uh, well well administrative yeah uh, so the assignment two if you didn't notice is out since a few weeks now a couple it's due november 21 end of the day as for assignment one it's always 11 59 pm uh, similarly to assignment one we last two labs so we will have two labs in class about assignment two and as for the previous assignment try to use those labs to get as much as feedback as possible from the teacher of your lab uh, so the suggested timeline for these assignments so this assignment uh, is asking you two things one is task and storyboard three tasks one simple one moderate and one complex for your project and one storyboard depicting at least two tasks of the three that you decided one single storyboard that's one part mm -hmm. so if we need to split the parts we would say that tomorrow in the first lab you can work on the tasks and on the storyboard and get feedback on those I know that many of you already started because I've seen tasks and I've seen storyboards in some cases more than once from the same group so probably if, if you are in that stage you can start tomorrow with the second part that is paper prototypes so starting from the task the three tasks starting from the storyboard you have to create two different paper prototypes and the difference is in the way of interaction and or devices that means that one paper prototype could be a mobile application for solving your for implementing let's say your solution and the other one could be a smartwatch application for implementing the same solution or one could be a desktop application and the other one could be a virtual reality application 
it's, it's made on paper, so it's virtually all possible, then you will need also to actually do that things in practice at a certain point. But again, it's still a prototype, so it shouldn't be 100% complete and perfect. There will be fake fi things that are fake and approximation. But you will be asked to create two of them diverging in the sense in the kind of device and in the kind of interaction. Mm? So one mobile, one smartwatch, one VR, one desktop, one AR, one mobile. Mm? So combination of things, one mobile plus speech interaction and the other one just mobile with touch. Different um, paper prototype, two different paper prototypes, and the suggestion that is not written here, hopefully is written in the text, is that if you are a group of four people, split the group in two. So two people will work on the first prototype and other two people will work independently on the second prototype once you decide what you want to do. So let's say you want to do one paper prototype with a mobile application and the other one it's a virtual reality application. Let's say that and two people, my suggestion is two people will work on the mobile application and the other two people independently without speaking with the other subgroup on the virtual reality application so that you are sure not to contaminate each other with the um, actual thinking and reasoning and so the two prototypes will be different in a way. And then clearly remember that you have to also at a certain point implement them. Mm -hmm. uh, but from experience, we have seen that many of the things are actually possible with some limitation. Mm -hmm. And we also have some, well, we have one headset. I have one headset in my virtual reality headset in my office, but Polytechnic has a few others if they are needed. So there will also be technology at a certain point to support. If that makes sense for your specific project. If it's not, pick another decision, but still you need to find two different ways to realize the paper prototype. Hmm? So, so to sum up, you will have at the end of the assignment two, three tasks, one storyboard, and two paper prototypes. And there will be feedback on that. And assignment three will be the heuristic evaluation on the two prototypes because from the results of the heuristic evaluation, you will use the results to decide where to move. So if to move with prototype one, if to continue with prot prototype two, if you merge something from prototype one to prototype two, and how you move on from that. Okay, so this is, um, all of these should be written, is written actually on the text of the assignment that again is out since a couple of weeks now. Any question about this before moving to the actual exercise? So exercise. Um, the following slides, the following two slides includes description and links to two paper prototype from last year course. Um, these were pre-feedback prototypes, so there will be something not totally okay. And so, as such, do not use them as example of good prototypes. Uh, in one case, so the second one wasn't even selected to proceed. So the first one was the one that they continue to the exam, the second one was abandoned because also in this case, each group had two prototypes to do. Mm? So, but I picked them because they are different. Mm? So they are not two prototypes on a mobile application. Mm? Uh, so what I want you to do in the next, let's say 15 minutes, is to working in group, in pairs, alone, whatever, better in groups and pairs, uh, pick one, or the following two prototypes, your choice. Look at them, the one that you think would be nicer for you to do this exercise. And using the design principle, we discuss in class. And the task reported for each prototype, 
there will be three tasks, one simple, one moderate, one complex, try to criticize in a constructive way the paper prototypes showing pros and cons of them for the design. So there is something missing, this is something not clear, etc. And these are made with the same criteria of your assignment. So the first prototype is Matilo 2. Um, and the value proposition was turning math into reality and the goal was to support elementary school teacher teaching math. Mm? So it's something for teachers at elementary school teaching math. And they had these three tasks, simple, moderate and complex. And at the first link, you can find a PDF of the paper prototype, clearly all the pages done. So without all the pieces, because they just have to present these. Uh, together and also flow diagram that is something that also we ask you that is showing how you move from one page to another so the paper prototype adjust the pages on their own let's say one screen per page and the flow diagram is telling you if you press this button you go to page five and if you press this other button you go to page three mm? so the flow diagram how you navigate mm, in the prototype so this is one, this is an augmented reality application for tablets. And the second one is called, and that was one that they brought to the exam and they passed the exam with the highest mark possible. And the other one is Touchgrass. Um, the available position is take a rest, enjoy your meal. And the goal was to disconnect from work during meal time especially for young adults. And the task, again, simple, complex, and moderate are those three. And as before, there is a prototype and the flow diagram. And in this case, this is a smartwatch application. So it looks like a smartwatch, so smaller screen, not a, not a lot of button, no mouse, you can just tap on it. And the prototype are just the screens of the smartwatch and the flow diagram is actually how you navigate from one screen to another. And the flow diagrams are taken from the slides of feedback that this group received. Uh, this was not the prototype this group chosen to continue. They chose another one that was a mobile application with something different. But just not to have two mobile applications, even one is a tablet, I choose the smartwatch in this case. And these were from two different teams so the first one was about education, so it was my team, and this one was about the first topic of last year that was slightly different from this year topic. Mm. And they did interviews and they did everything you, almost everything that you did this year. Mm. So pick one at your choice and 15 minutes to look at them, think about them, what you don't understand, Clearly, you cannot try them on paper. You can just look at them, but think about the principle we have seen, consistency, if some screens are missing, if there is something not clear, thinking at these specific population that are interested in these uh, two prototypes. And then we can wrap up and discuss together a couple of groups, let's say, and see if you are heading in the right direction or not, and hopefully this will be also useful for you, for your project. Okay. It's time. Um, how, so prototype one, who looked at prototype one? So raise your hand, yes, okay. So, uh, who looked at prototype two? Okay, it's a good split. So let's start from prototype one. Um, just because it's one and becomes before two. So, let me open the high level diagram flow. That's the same, just to remember where are we. So, pros and cons. So these are three tasks and it was for specific population that is uh, high school, elementary, primary school teachers learning, teaching math. So 
pros of this prototype, at least one pros. Yes. Yes, it's easy to understand, and also the the fact that they use AR was actually uh, well. Maybe it's not clear from from the slides, but the idea was that um, teachers needs a collaborative setting with children and adaptive, so they can. The idea was that they look at a table and then say, "Oh, I want uh, how much is three bananas plus." And then they have a gorilla that will eat one banana. How many bananas will remain on the table? And they can, and, and if a child say, oh, but what if it just uh, eat half? Oh, well, you can try and they can show visible, in a visible way what happens. And it's the desk in the room with the augmented reality for the fruits and the gorillas, etc. So it's simple and this collaborative aspect was central for the specific population and investigation they have done in need finding. So, okay, I've said another, another, another pros, some cons now of the prototype. Wasn't perfect, okay. Uh, I don't know if it's a... Uh, well, try. Oh, the third page. This one? Yes. There are some elements that seem uh, playful, joyful. For example, here, these, um, these buttons are made of a different uh, wheat. Now, in, in, a paper wall, in a paper prototype, uh, the wheat of a button is not important. But in this case, since it's, a, it's something for elementary school, uh, it seems uh, that uh, they want to create something joyful, something playful to, cap to capture the uh, attention of a child. Mm -hmm. But this application is used by a teacher. Mm -hmm. Why is it like that? So you're saying, just to, to repeat for the recording, the fact that these buttons are different size, it could be because of uh, it's playful or because it's, so if it's playful, it's okay for children, but maybe not for for teacher and and if not why they are different size that's a good point actually they are, they are different size but they weren't in the final version so probably is just a problem drawing but that could be also easy to, to solve because this was a paper with lines so it was easier to to get it so yes it could be maybe new scenario could be a different dimension because it's creating something new, while the problem one, two, three are actually saved scenarios. So better distinction maybe between, so problem two is actually big as new scenarios, but there is no reason hierarchically to be like that. So that could be one minor issue, let's say. Yeah. In this menu? Yeah, this, this screen is basically useless. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very, it was very colored and engaging. So if a child sees, oh, there's all these colors and symbols, etc. But yes, basically it's a big start button and tutorial that they didn't implement because it's a prototype and settings that they didn't implement because it's a prototype and credits, and you know what I'm going to say about credits. Um, so basically, yes, it was pretty, not particularly useful, right? Um, because yeah, it makes sense to have settings like sound effects, vibration, and language, but in the end they did it in English, and because the course is English, and they add sound effects, and they didn't have vibration because it was a prototype. So, um, yes, these, these screens, the, for these two, two screens can be uh, revisited uh, a bit considering that again it's a prototype so yes you will have settings and tutorials but uh, hopefully you 
well, you won't implement settings and tutorials and credits. Well, credits is just a screen saying, oh, this is done by me and this other person and this other person. Uh, but yeah, that could be a bit, a different organizational space could be good to have. Uh, they also did it for, you know, making it more playful and so you would see all these things colored and a big start button and you can press it. So there, there, were, re there were reasoning behind that. Uh, they keep that actually in the final version uh, because probably they were convincing enough that it was a good idea. But yes, a, a different organization of space could be another good thing to have. Anything else? One more, at least, from another one. What means preferences? Like I, I want a gorilla or, oh, just, so, okay. So this was, so the idea that the, the teacher prepared the scenario at home so they prepare, yeah, it's not written, um, and, and going by memory. So they say, okay, this is market, and I prepare something, and then in the room, in the classroom, I open problem two, and so you have something already set up, and speaking with children. Okay, so now we are using three apples, and we move the three apples on the table. What happens if we remove one, and we, oh, it's two, okay, and then let's see if there are two, let's count them, right? Um, so it's done outside of the platform. It's done collaboratively outside of the platform. Yes, the, the, thing, the problem with collaborative things is that you know, some things are offline with respect to the technology. So yeah, you need extra explanation. That wasn't written in the slide. But one more cons. Go. In uh, page uh, six and seven, they interact with the same object uh, uh, Wait. with a different option. This one. This one? No. This one. Yes. The edit and delete. Yes. In one case, uh, they lit up in the other table. Mm hmm. No, no, that's good, uh, because the, um, so what, what happens here, and it's, it's difficult to see clearly for this, is that you hold the banana and a trash bin appears and you can trash it to remove from the screen. And here instead, if you change the color, like I want uh, three yellow bananas or three brown bananas, like t t different ages of bananas, and so you edit it. So you, you tap to, quick tap to have the edit, long tap to, because it's, it's touch screen, so you don't have the right click and left click, right? So you have to, to be, to use other mechanism with single tap, uh, long tap, double tap to, to do that, and long press is actually easier to do than double tap. Okay, so one thing that is missing that they added after, actually, is, related to this market and these arrows. So, well, whatever. What happens if I press an arrow? Yes, and which one I got it? Who knows? So looking here, you don't know, right? So, and again, if I'm a teacher and I want to, so where is start, a new scenario. And I don't want to have the market, I want to have the zoo or which other scenario they add? There is a list somewhere. Well, I don't know where, but let's say here, the kitchen or the school. Hmm? How can I create a project? Not in the market, but directly in the kitchen. Now, I cannot. I always go in the market and then I need to Either know that I need to press on the name or press next, 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 next until I arrive to the scenario I want to have. 
So what thing that they added was actually an intermediate screen before this. So you do new scenario and the application asks you which scenario. Do you want the market? Do you want the kitchen? Do you want with maybe a preview? And so you select the scenario that you want to set up so that you start with the right scenario. And since the objects are related to the scenario, clearly if you want to do something in a kitchen or in a school, you will have the object for the school only in that scenario. So it was a way to set up quicker the things and create more transparency in the action. So instead of imagining that a person will need to press on market or press next, next, next until it arrived, it's a direction. I want to create a new scenario and I want to use the market or I want to use the school and let me kickstart from the right scenario that I as a teacher have in my mind. And so that was the one screen they added. It was a totally missing screen here. And another thing they do well was the uh, are you sure? because there was unsaved change. So if you want to lose everything or not, and there was a specific design choice they considered going by memory. Uh, and then there was also something about this hiding button, um, but I don't remember how it became. Um, I probably decide things here, you know, you have two, mo two ways to hide this area with hide here or with the top. Uh, and so, and then pressing here also disappear this uh, object here. So they simplified these various hiding options in a more consistent way. Uh, they had used cases for this, but they are not in the, in the picture. Okay, so quickly, let's move to the other one that is also smaller because screens are smaller. So, one pros. With respect to the goal and with respect to the task they had. Who have seen this? Who have analyzed this? Okay, so the three, four of you, one pros and one cons at least before going. Yeah, it's, it's easy because if it's a smartwatch and you want to not use the phone, it's also helping you not to use the phone because you activate that and then maybe something will change on the phone but you don't really care and you just activate this moment on at your waist without actually using the phone. So one, one problem of technology that try to improve the, uh, the usage of the phone is that this technology is typically on the phone. So to use this technology, you have to use the phone. So that's one good idea, just say, let's not use the phone, let's use a smartwatch. Okay, that's one pro. Let's say one cons. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that this, the flow diagram could have been done, let's say, in a clearer way. And uh, another thing, uh, for the third uh, task, the complex one, mm -hmm. from a reward provider company, uh, I don't know, in the flow diagram, I see the number four. That's, That's the company account. Yeah, but... That show... Your, your team to the task. So it's that task is not fully covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, let's change the speaker. Oh, it's not. It's not. Well, okay. It's related to the meal. So that could be enabled in any moment. Exactly, and I don't understand the, the first uh, screen of the, the connection with the, the network. For instance, if I am a, uh, if I was a remote worker, 
this doesn't apply to a remote worker, yes, let's say. You can only get rewards if you are at work, if you are at home. That's a limitation more than a design issue, but yes. Yeah, there are there are too many texts and probably so. Yeah, so also rewards ninety eight percent. What what means rewards ninety eight percent? I got to rate rewards all the rewards I get, or I spent all the rewards. What so for no usage is okay. The more the worst, or the more the best, and rewards same and so phone usage is either positive or negative and the rewards maybe also but remaining time is seems just related to the moment so uh, and then one is percentage one is second the other is minutes um, or hours who knows mm -hmm. yeah yes something else so here it's it's easier to find and probably that's the the reason why they choose the other prototype i don't know they didn't follow up with this they used the other one um this group used the other one they had something else one more things and then we wrap up What's, yes, this is 100% of, and this is the phone usage in, in what, in days, hours, the last hour, the minutes, yeah. But also, you know, what is, so this is the screen where you end the time and you successfully, you know, you see, well done, so you have completed, you, you didn't have, didn't use the phone during the meal, what is this? 32 plus 8. It wasn't my, my group, so I have no idea what this is. Maybe they, they, they had a clue, but why 32 plus 8 and not 40? So why plus 8? And I imagine this is some points you get. So you get 32 points plus 8. And also, you know, if you want, are you going to set time in this way on, on a phone or a smartwatch, changing the single uh, item, or you just maybe tap on it and you, you move and scroll instead of pressing the buttons. And, and this, this is not a smartwatch, so these arrows are really, really small, and it will be almost impossible to get just the arrow on top of one without getting the, the one on top of zero. So, it's, they try to put too many things in the screen and they should have probably decide better what to do and what to report, etc. And then they decided not to continue with that, with this prototype. Uh, they decided to continue with the other one that was a mobile application. Uh, so more screen space, uh, but, but still this is, um, and then there are other things that, that are not totally good, but the idea of using a smartwatch was actually good as the pros we have said. Okay, so this is just, let's say, just an example of two prototypes of last year that your colleague done. Also, to give you an example of the flow, because you also will need to do something like this, uh, a flow like this to explain how you can navigate in, in the prototype, and then will be a screenshot or a scans of your prototype. Hmm? Um, that you have done again on paper and then you will need to have also the positive on paper ready to be used for assignment 3 that is again after November 21 hmm? but before you get a feedback from us just to say if you are on the right direction or there are huge problem that will not let's say survive to the evaluation so that to solve the major issues before doing the evaluation okay so it's almost 7 so have a nice evening and see you tomorrow in the lab with the one of my topic at least.